Bevy 0.10 is out and we've got an absolute boatload of changes for you. Bevy is an open source game engine in Rust that fully embraces the entity component system paradigm. It supports 2D and 3D games as well as being extremely modular, which is why it might be viewed as a developer's game engine, because that modularity comes with a consistent tech stack and data model. Once you're developing plugins, you can easily find yourself at any level, low or high, making changes to something you might not have thought you had the experience to. And nowhere is this more apparent, in my opinion, than the way that Bevy builds on WGPU. To build a range of APIs from low-level raw WGPU to high-level material APIs. Let's start off the release coverage with some quick hits. Bevy now works on more Android devices as well as iOS. And personally, I'm excited to make some mobile games this year. Spatial audio is now a thing, so if you've gotten used to that from AAA games like Fortnite, you can now build 3D audio in your own games. Skeletal animation transitions actually exist now as of 0.10. Of course, there have been numerous parallelization and performance improvements as there are in every release. And to close out the quick kits, windows are now entities, which in my opinion makes them a little bit easier to work with. That leaves us with what I've categorized into three categories, stageless, bevy UI, and shaders. Stageless has been a long time coming, and I'm happy to say the IS loopless crate is now obsolete. The changes made in this crate were always a temporary solution until the stageless RFC actually made it in in Bevy 0.10. And it's done a really good job of bridging the gap between the old Bevy stage system and where we are today. ECS Schedule V3, which is the name for the merged feature, is quite large and actually probably deserves its own video. Adding systems, system sets, run conditions, and even states have all been changed, and covering it all in this video would probably dominate the rest of the announcements. Following Igui's lead, Bevy has adopted Access Kit, yielding first-party accessibility support in the engine. The Bevy Ally crate is on by default, and while there's still more work to do, this is a really strong step in the right direction. Taffy is the crate that the Bevy and Dioxys teams revived to power layouts, and Taffy 0.3 brings speed improvements as well as a new gap property. We're also very close to having a grid feature, although that's not quite ready yet. Defining styles is now const, so we can now share styles easier in my opinion. We don't have to define styles inside of our systems when building UI. We can set up shareable styles and export them as const and then use them across a number of different UI elements. And I'm personally a huge fan of perceptually uniform color spaces and Bevy's new additions to the color struct enable LCH, a perceptually uniform color space. This means it'll be easier to build in-engine palettes that look like the colors belong with each other. In other words, lightness is consistent across colors. To round off Bevy UI, we've got an awesome new text layout example for anybody that finds visual aids useful when thinking about alignment or justification. Not having access to a depth buffer was something I ran into pretty quickly when I started working with Bevy's new at the time material APIs. It turns out that a depth buffer is used in quite a few effects and Bevy just hadn't implemented it yet. This is fixed now with a huge ton of effort going into depth and normal pre-passes that you can now use in your own main passes. What this means is you'll have access to the depth buffer in your own shaders to create effects like the intersection of this bubble with the ground. This also sets the groundwork for more advanced techniques like screen space ambient occlusion and temporal anti-aliasing. I'm probably unreasonably excited about the new tone mapping and color grading features in Bevy 0.10, because when I shoot videos for this channel, what I do is I shoot raw inside of my video camera, and then I take that information and I use it inside of DaVinci to color grade the output, which allows me to create a stylized, very interesting look if I still want to. The color grading control in Bevy 0.10 is fairly basic, offering only a small level of control. But the tone mapping choices now include a plethora of options, including ACES, which is not only popular in video production, but also the default in Unreal Engine. Bloom was a major feature in my eyes of Bevy 0.9, but as soon as it got shipped, it almost immediately started receiving immediate overhaul. Building on top of the new tone mapping options like ACES, Bloom now outputs something that feels a little bit more intuitive. There are two new examples for 2D and 3D Bloom that we'll definitely be digging into later on this channel. Atmospheric fog is now a drop-in forward rendering style effect on the PBR shader. Both fog itself and distance effects in general enable a heightened sense of how deep something is in your scene and what's surrounding it. The standard material in Bevy extended the alpha mode to add multiplicative and additive, addi additive, ad additive, additive blending. <laughs> These blend modes are often used to recreate things like fire or stained glass. It's now easier to pass in custom constants to your shaders using shader def val. Shader def constants can be used inside of your shaders in if statements to selectively enable or disable different features of your shader. The imports for the global and view structs, which are used fairly often, now have their own import paths. 
The global and view structs now have their own import paths as they're used fairly often, and you don't necessarily need to pull in everything else to be able to use them. These are bevy render globals and bevy render view. This makes it easier to import as well as less likely that you need to redefine types when building your own shaders. Which brings us to storage buffers in AsBind Group. AsBind Group is an amazing API that you'll run into fairly quickly if you start to write your own shaders. In addition to uniforms, textures, and samplers, which you may be used to, storage buffers are now supported as well, which allow you to pass in arbitrary chunks of data right into your shader. And if you've ever tried to build something deeper, you know that using the render app means that you need to extract components from the main world into the render app. The extract component trait can now be derived on your custom structs, which makes this a ton easier and also enables declarative filtering. And of course, since WGPU is the cornerstone of Bevy's rendering architecture, it's nice to see that they keep up to date with 0.5 coming in the 0.10 release. WGPU already had an OpenGL backend, but Bevy now supports that by default, providing more fallbacks for platforms that may not support modern APIs like Vulkan. If you're deep into the graphics game, you may be excited to know that non-uniform indexing is now supported for render plugins. Now, that doesn't mean that the Bevy core rendering features are using it, but it does mean that you can start taking advantage of it. This is a step towards what's called bindless, and there's even an example in the Bevy examples showing how to use this non-uniform indexing. And that's it for Bevy 0 0.10 to Day, there's a ton to dive into so you can expect deeper dives on this channel coming up in the future. If you've got a feature that you'd like to see more of, leave it in the comments and have a great rest of your day.